Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Metabolism and Menopause podcast. My name is Stephanie, and I'm your host and CEO of Vitality OET. We are a women's health, nutrition, and fitness company that focuses predominantly on women's hormones, particularly once they go through perimenopause and onwards. We know that so many women suffer with symptoms after this time in their life, who have hot flashes, night sweats, irritability, brain fog, and this weight gain that seems to have come on out of absolutely nowhere, despite you not changing anything. So you go back to your methods of eating less, moving more, cutting your carbs, yet this time nothing's working or the change is so little and you're super frustrated and you just don't know what to do. So we know that now your body is inherently different than what it was before you went through this hormonal change in your life. So our mission at Vitality is to teach women about how their bodies change during this period in their life so you can finally reach your health and fitness goals, live a life full of vitality, and really understand how to take care of this new body of yours. So today I want to cover supplements. This is a question that we get asked all the time. Collagen, what supplements should you take? Are BCAs and creatine okay? Can I take this? Can I take that? Will it help me? So today I want to go through all the basic things that we typically recommend for most women and then some contraindications and things like that. Um, It is really important to note that we do like supplements are supplemental. That's exactly what they are. So if we aren't addressing the root cause, they really aren't going to do anything. So for example, you have a car and you're trying to win a race, but the engine is not really great. But instead of trying to put the effort and time into fixing the engine, which is going to make it sustainable long term, you just try to slap a turbo onto there. The turbo really isn't going to take you very far or maybe not even get you to the finish line because you're not addressing the root cause, which is or the root problem, which is the crappy engine. And supplements are just like that. It's the turbo. So if you're in a good health status and we're focusing on the big things that are actually causing the issues, supplements can be great and can be really beneficial. But if you're not addressing the root causes, it's just band-aid approaches and it's not going to be sustainable long term and you're not actually going to get to where you want to be. So the first one that I want to recommend for improving your general health, particularly once you're going through perimenopause and menopause, are omega-3s. They are extremely important for your brain function, your joint health, and even eye health, not to mention inflammation and your stress response, which we know that once we're going through perimenopause and menopause and our estrogen drops, we have a reduced ability to really deal with stress. So our stress tolerance decreases. We become a lot more sensitive to stressors. So before we could handle a 9 out of 10, now we can only handle a 5 out of 10 before things really start to go out of whack in our bodies. And that's going to result in extra inflammation. Inflammation inherently will result in like um, pre-diabetic risk, cardiovascular disease risk, and fat storage. So omega-3s really help with that stress response and the inflammation and helping keeping those cortisol levels down. Omega-3s are quite difficult to get in our regular diets. Um, So in general, you want to make sure you're only doing omega-3s, not omega-6s, and It can be like a general fish oil, and we want to aim for like three to four grams per per day. Um, You can get omega-3s in your diet naturally with fatty fish um, or seafood like salmon, uh, mackerel, tuna, trout, stuff like that. And then flax is a great option as well if you don't eat fish. Um, But taking an omega-3 supplement can be incredibly helpful. Um, I take some myself. Next, we have vitamin D. So vitamin D, if you live anywhere north of Carol or Carolina, well, almost Carolina, California was what I was going to say, um, you don't get outside very often or you don't get excited outside very often. Vitamin D is actually very important to take. It helps with calcium and phosphorus retention and is crucial for our bone health and density as we age. We want to aim for 1,000 to 3,000 IUs per day with a meal. Um, vitamin D is so, so great. It's something we recommend everyone takes. It's just important for general health. Um, And again, it helps with like calcium retention. And when estrogen decreases, we do see a reduction in bone density because our body isn't good at pulling the calcium to the bone. So having that vitamin D can help with that pathway a lot. Vitamin C, another great one. It's a very powerful antioxidant, great for muscle repair and recovery, which is huge. Because during perimenopause and menopause, we are going to see a reduced ability for us to build muscle um, and maintain muscle mass. And this is because estrogen goes down, which sucks. 
So we have to make sure that we're sending the right muscle signal or the right signal to our muscle to break down and then repair and get stronger. Um, but if we're not actually repairing it properly, we're just breaking it down, breaking it down, breaking it down. So this is why recovery is really important and having vitamin C because it helps with that a lot. We want to maintain as much muscle as we can because it helps the insulin sensitivity. It helps us stay strong, fit. It helps us look good. Um, but also like maintaining your quality of life. So maintaining your independence. And then also it helps keep your metabolism nice and high. Muscle burns a lot of calories at rest. So the more muscle we have, the more calories are naturally going to burn in a day, which is awesome. It really helps with weight loss. Um, not to mention that vitamin C also helps with iron absorption, collagen synthesis, again, stress reduction for cortisol, which we already know is very important because cortisol's ha cortisol has four times the receptors in our belly fat than anywhere else in our body. So as long as cortisol is really high, we're going to retain belly fat. So vitamin C can really help with that. And then as well as helping with like maintenance of our hair, bones, teeth, stuff like that. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, which means that it dissolves in water. We can pee it out if we have too much. So the risk of overdose is very, very low. Um, however, if you do have too much vitamin C, it can lead to digestive distress. So you'll get the runs, which isn't great. Um, recommended daily limit is about 2,000 milligrams. Some of the best food sources for vitamin C are going to come from fruit. So cantaloupe, um, yellow peppers, and broccoli are actually really good. Kiwi, guava, strawberries, citrus fruits like oranges are all great sources. Um, some other ones that are very helpful is a vitamin B complex. So this is something I recommend to almost everyone. Um, most women entering perimenopause or those who have been on birth control for more than three years in their life are typically going to be deficient in B vitamins. Not to mention also folate, which is uh, also a B vitamin. So it's a lot more difficult to absorb and convert into folic acid in natural forms than synthetic forms. So one B50 complex is probably fine for most normal adults, um, for women, and then take in the morning with water. B vitamins are going to be most, um, most predominantly found in like animal sources like dairy, for example. Another thing to know about vitamin B complex is that stuff is very energizing. So make sure you take it in the morning because if you take it at nighttime, that will keep you awake. I was talking to a woman who was taking her B vitamins at night. We just switched it to the morning and she did significantly better. Another one that is super helpful, magnesium glycinate or magnesium biglycinate. Magnesium is known for helping keep our bowel movements regular, um, but it's not very well known for helping us sleep improving hormonal imbalances and relaxing our muscles. So it actually helps us sleep so much better. And that's because most popular forms of magnesium are actually designed to stay within the large intestine um, or our bowels. Whereas magnesium glycinate or biglycinate is one of the only synthetic forms of magnesium that works systematically on muscular tissue. So it works throughout our entire body, not just the intestine. Um, so it also helps with our hormonal detox chain, which is very helpful for many hormonal imbalances to just help us get rid of when we have too much excess. You can also get magnesium in foods like tofu, almonds, banana, spinach, things like that. Then collagen. Oh, this is a question that we get all the time. Collagen. Should I take it? Should I not take it? What kinds are there? All that kind of stuff. So there are two main types of collagen. There's type one and there's type three. So type one is the most abundant in our bodies naturally. It is found in most of our connective tissues, cartilage, bones, skin, and it works effectively to heal or rebuild tissues in the body, like our joints, for example. Whereas type three is most abundant in our organs, and it's hypothesized to work primarily in decreasing inflammatory pathways in the body. So it can really help with inflammation. So type one is more for like rebuilding. Type three is for keeping inflammation in check. Um, there is marine collagen. Um, it's primarily type one. So the one that's helping with like teeth, skin, tissues, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's heavily marketed towards like skin elasticity. And then there's also bovine collagen and it's a mix of type one and type three. So it's kind of a better all around product, um, for both joint health, skin health, inflammation, that kind of stuff. So if you were to pick between the two, um, I would recommend bovine over marine. Research has shown that it is most beneficial for those who are lacking protein in their diets, which points to the benefits of amino acids over collagen itself. So 
collagen can be really beneficial for people who have a low protein diet, but you're going to get the same results from just having more protein in your diet. Um, I personally do find collagen is quite um, expensive because it's heavily marketed towards women. So honestly, just up your protein instead. It's a great option. Um, again, it can be a good way to get some extra protein in, but the scientific the scientific community is still out on whether it's a useful way to really spend your money versus just eating more protein and getting the exact same benefits. Um, if you are taking collagen, make sure that you're getting enough vitamin C with it because that can help with collagen absorption. So if you're going to be taking it, you want to benefit as much as you can from your collagen. So make sure you're also having it with vitamin C at the same time. Then we had a couple questions in particular from like clients that we've had that I want to talk about um, in terms of like other type of supplements almost. So creatine. This is one that people are like, should women take it? I don't know. It is very, very beneficial for muscle and strength. No research has shown that it makes any women bulky. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But it can create small amounts of water retention in some women. So if you see the scale jump up after you start taking creatine, it's just water retention. It's not fat gain. And also it'll help you just get more out of your workouts in the gym, um, build more muscle mass that way, things like that. So it's just, your, it'll take time for your body to adjust, but don't panic if you see the scale go up by a couple pounds. It's literally just water. Um, it can help you potentially get to the muscle tone that you want faster. Um, so that's something to think about. If you do want to take it, be consistent with your intake and start with a very low dose and gradually work your way up so you can prevent water retention. Because if you go from none to a lot, you are going to see more water retention. If you just like slowly increase, you'll be able to mitigate that a little bit better and it'll help you feel a bit better in terms of like maybe feeling a little less puffy and things like that. The next one is BCAAs, so branch-chained amino acids. They are basically the building blocks of protein. So you have like all these different kinds of protein. Those proteins are made from little amino acids. So they're basically the building blocks of protein, but just in powder form. So while they're super popular, they don't really seem to have much of an added benefit if you're getting enough protein throughout your day. There can be some benefits for muscle recovery after a workout or if you're working out on an empty stomach, which we don't recommend anyways, because during perimenopause and menopause, women just do better in a fed state. We have a really hard time accessing energy stores. So if we're working out in a fasted state, it just it's a lot more stress on our system. We don't have as much access to energy. We're not going to be able to push ourselves as much in the gym and not benefit as much from those training sessions, which we want because we have a harder time building and maintaining muscle mass. So we really want to get the most bang for our buck in a workout. So make sure you're working out in a fed state. Um, okay, anyways, sidetracked on that. Um, Again, there's some benefits for muscle recovery if you're working out on an empty stomach, which we do not recommend. But research has so shown that EAAs, essential amino acid powder, is more beneficial than BCAAs. So if you feel like you need to take them, it's better to opt in for EAAs instead of BCAAs. However, if it helps you with hydration, like if you're someone who really struggles getting your water intake in, it can be really, really helpful just to have that. It's the same as like adding Mio to your water. If it tastes better and you like it, Go for it. There's no harm in it. It's not going to do anything negative anyways. Then we have probiotics. So this is a uh, topic that I like to talk about, and it's always so controversial. Um, personally, we don't recommend them. Um, probiotics are kind of like taking a shot in the dark at a dartboard while you're blindfolded. We have like the way probiotics work is that there's so many different types of bacteria in our gut and in probiotics. So you have no idea if the probiotic you're taking is making an imbalance worse, if it's making it better, like you're literally just guessing. Um, and honestly, it's not really worth the money. Um, like if you're finding it's really helpful for you, then awesome. Um, but unless you're going to get a strain test with your poop, there's no point in getting probiotics if you want to improve your gut health. Um, taking a digestive enzyme or eating more prebiotic probiotic foods would be far more helpful for you and honestly cheaper than taking probiotics. Um, because again, we could be feeding bacteria that's too high and make things worse, um, or you're just wasting your money and it's not really doing anything to your gut health. So just focus on your pre and probiotic foods. And then for some people, a digestive enzyme can be incredibly helpful. Hypothyroidism. So there are some supplements that can be helpful for hypothyroidism. Research does suggest that vitamin Bs, iron, zinc, and iodine can be, can, can 
be helpful for some, some people with hypothyroidism. Iron is needed for the conversion of T4 to T3. So that's important. Iodine is needed for building T3 and T4. So you need it to build those things. Zinc is needed for maintaining healthy levels of TSH, T3 and T4. But it really depends on your type of hypothyroidism because everyone's hypothyroidism is going to have different mechanisms. So maybe it's like poor communication to your thyroid. So it's not creating T- TSH. It could be poor uptake or a poor conversion of T3 to T4. It could be because you have too many antibodies. It could be that you have too much hyperconversion to reverse T3. Like there's so many mechanisms that can cause hypothyroidism. So without really understanding where that is, the supplements, again, you're kind of taking a shot in the dark. So it is important to note that some supplements may not be helpful for you. Um, So digging into that root cause is going to be really important. Um, And then lastly, I just want to talk a little bit about supplement brands and quality. Um, There are some guidelines on supplementation in North America, but for the most part, the health industry is very unregulated, unfortunately. So ideally, you do want to buy a brand of supplements that has undergone third-party testing um, for added regulations and like label transparency so that you're actually getting what you pay for because a lot of companies they will actually claim on the label what they're putting into the product before processing but then what's actually like available and what your body can absorb post-processing is different um so that's what i mean by like being label transparent like it's actually in like the product actually has what you think it has so if you choose to spend the money you can purchase pharmaceutical grade supplements they have far more regular they have been far more rigorously tested for sufficient levels and label honesty um there's quite a few brands and like yes generally they will be better than your regular brands or amazon bargains however if you're not wanting to spend the money most supplements you do buy will contain at least part of what you want them to there just might be more fillers and things like that um it just it's likely that it's not the amount that it says is in there or it's not as a bioavailable or your body's not able to absorb it as well. Um, we do, if you head to Nutrition Dynamics, they have amazing third bo- third party tested and regulated um, third party tested products. They're super great. I super trust that brand. Um, they are a little bit more pricey, but like you absolutely get exactly what you're paying for. So you know you're actually putting into your body what it says on the label. Um, and that being said, we do have a code vitality 10 to get a discount of 10% off your orders with them. Um, if that's something that you're interested in. And lastly, we do have a guide with all the information that I just went over today, um, to access that head to our Facebook community, the metabolism or metabolism and menopause by vitality secrets for fat loss. You can access the supplement guide there. Um, And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, need help calculating your calories, your macros, whatever that is, never hesitate to reach out. We are always more than happy to do that for free for you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Share to anyone that you think could benefit from these supplements, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.